click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends. In today's session, we are going to study about the important properties of lubricants. When I talk about any chemical substance, the properties of that substance can be classified into two things physical properties and chemical properties. Properties of all elements, all compounds, all the chemicals in chemistry are divided into two things, physical properties and chemical properties. Over here, we are going to study the different properties of lubricants because by studying these properties, we can determine the utility of it. So in today's session, we'll study all the properties of lubricants as well as how can we find them. Important properties of lubricants. Generally, the lubricating oils are tested for their physical and chemical properties. These are the two properties which are extremely important. Now, why are they important? If I take an oil for lubrication to a machine, now the physical property, let's say the physical property is the melting point of it or a boiling point of it. The boiling point is the temperature at which the liquid oil will turn into its gaseous form. So, if I have a machine working at 1000 degrees Celsius, but the melting point of oil itself is 500 degrees Celsius. So the moment I will put oil to lubricate two parts which are in friction. So the moment I'll put oil to it at 1000 degrees Celsius, the oil will evaporate. That means there is no point of putting oil to it because oil has a boiling point of 500 degrees Celsius. Boiling points and melting points are nothing but physical properties. Now let's talk about a chemical property. If I have a machine working at 1000 degrees Celsius, which has certain chemicals in it. Now I put oil as a lubricating material in between them. But this oil is chemically extremely reactive to the chemicals there. And if this oil is reactive and if this oil mixes up with the chemicals over there, there will be an explosion or the reaction will not be what the reaction I want. And the product I will get will not be the product I need. And that's the reason why we should know both the physical and chemical properties of any lubricant before using it because we are going to use it for big machinery at very intricate and delicate parts of it to reduce friction. It should do two purposes. The first purpose is to be helpful. That is, it's to avoid friction. And the second purpose is it itself should not go and react chemically with any of the chemicals present in there. And both the purposes should be served. And to serve both the purposes, we should first study the properties of both the purposes. That means we should study the physical and chemical properties and see that where the oil fits in for which purpose. So over here we have listed few physical and few chemical properties. Starting off with the physical properties and the methods used for determining the physical properties. So the first is viscosity or viscosity index determination. We should see how much the oil or the lubricant that we are going to use is viscous. The viscosity is measured and it's given in the form of a viscosity number and according to number we can use that viscosity of that particular oil in the machinery and it is determined with the method of redwood viscometer number one and number two. Now viscometer number one and number two are nothing but two tools. The viscometer is the tool which is used or the device which is used for measuring the viscosity of the oil. So either we can use viscometer 1 or we can use the viscometer 2. Both of them will measure the viscosity of the oil and by measuring the viscosity of the oil, we will find out the viscosity index of that particular oil. Moving ahead, we have flash point and fire point determination. Now what exactly is flash point or fire point? Flash point or a fire point is that point wherein oil will start itself for the combustion. Oil itself can be extremely combustible and we expose that oil in the atmospheric oxygen and then we heat it to a great temperature, it may catch fire. We do not want oil that we are using as a lubricating material to catch fire or any lubricant that we are using as a lubricating material should not catch fire in the midst of machine. If that happens, it destroys the entire machinery, it destroys the intricate and the delicate parts of the machinery and because of that, we will not get a purpose served but we will get more damaged. And that's the reason why flash point or fire point is already checked. It's checked by two methods. The first is Abel's flask point apparatus and the second is Pensky martins flash point apparatus. So we have different apparatus of it and the flash points are already checked. Now if the flash point is greater than our normal temperature, then we do not have to worry. But if the flash point is near or in the range of a temperature or less than a temperature, we shall not use that lubricant at all or else it will create some kind of damage. 
let's move on to the third point and the third point is cloud point also known as the poor point now what exactly is cloud point or poor point cloud point and poor point are that temperatures at which the wax which is there present in the oil or wax which is present in the lubricant will have some kind of cloudy effect in it that means it will be shown in a very cloudy or a hazy format now this is not very desirable and that's the reason why we should know the temperatures at which this may occur in our lubricants and so we can avoid that it is done by cloud or pore point apparatus the next is volatile matter content what do we mean by volatile matter volatile matter is that matter which will easily evaporate which will easily go away now if i have oil which is extremely volatile that means if I put 5 liters of oil over here and it's extremely volatile, that means 2 to 3 liters will just go away in an hour. Then there is no point of putting that oil. That means if I have put oil between the two friction surfaces of a machine, but as soon as I pour the oil, it just goes away or it just vanishes off in the atmosphere. I do not want that kind of oil because I want the lubricant to remain between the parts and make sure that the friction is less. And that's the reason why the volatile content of the oil should be less. It is done with the help of a vaporimeter. Next, we move on to the oxidation stability. Now, what is oxidation stability? What do we mean by oxidation? Oxidation is nothing but reaction with oxygen or addition of oxygen. Now, when I am doing a reaction and I have a lubricant, which on addition of oxygen is forming something else, that is not very useful. That means if I have a lubricant in its pure form and I want to use that lubricant in the machine, but as soon as it is exposed to the atmospheric oxygen, it starts reacting with that oxygen and gives an oxidation reaction. And after giving an oxidation reaction, it itself forms an oxide and that oxide is not what it originally was. I do not want that oxide to be the lubricant between the two parts. I wanted the original lubricant to be between the two parts. And that's the reason why we should always test for oxidation stability. Oxidation stability is done by slice oxidation test. Finally, we have carbon residue. Carbon residue is nothing but the unused carbon or the unwanted carbon which is present in the lubricants or in the grease and that can be done with two forms. The first is condensate method and the next one is Lamb's bottoms method. Both the methods are equally useful for finding the carbon residue. Next, we move on to the chemical properties. We just saw all the physical properties. Now, we'll see all the chemical properties over here. So, these are all the four chemical properties and these are the methods used to determine the chemical property of it. The first one is the acid value, the amount of acid which is present in the lubricant and this is done by the method tetrametry. Now tetrametry is the only method which helps us not only to find acid value but also the saponification value as well as the aniline point. So all of these three can be done by the tetrametry but the aniline point also has a better method over here and that method is known as aniline point apparatus so with the help of aniline point apparatus also we can find the aniline point but acid value and saponification both of them can be easily found out with the method of titrimetry finally move on to the emulsification emulsification is done by steam emulsification number we get that number and then we'll find out what is the emulsification of that respective lubricant so in today's session we studied about the physical properties the methods used to find out the physical properties of a lubricant the chemical properties of the lubricant the methods used to find out the chemical properties of the lubricant and also why it is so important to find out all the properties of the lubricant to check its utility thank you so much for watching this video stay tuned to ikira and subscribe to ikira